Christ himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. That we might die to sin and live to righteousness. I invite you to join us in our opening hymn, Were You There When They Crucified My Lord? Let us pray together. Almighty God, 
Graciously behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah 52 and 53, 52 verse 13 to 53 verse 12. Look, my servant will succeed. He will be exalted and lifted very high. Just as many were appalled by you, he too appeared disfigured and human. His appearance, unlike that of mortals. But he will astonish many nations. Kings will be silenced because of him. Because they will see what they haven't seen before. What they haven't heard before, they will ponder. Who can believe what we have heard? And for whose sake has the Lord's arm been revealed? He grew up like a young plant before us, like a root from dry ground. He possessed no splendid form for us to see, no desirable appearance. He was despised and avoided by others, a man who suffered, who knew sickness well, like someone from whom people hid their faces. He was despised, and we didn't think about him. It was certainly our sickness that he carried and our sufferings that he bore, but we thought him afflicted, struck down by God and tormented. He was pierced because of our rebellions and crushed because of our crimes. He bore the punishment that made us whole. By his wounds we are healed. Like sheep, we had all wandered away, each going its own way. But the Lord let fall on him all of our crimes. He was oppressed and tormented, but didn't open his mouth. Like a lamb being brought to slaughter, like an ewe silent before her shearers, he didn't open his mouth. Due to an unjust ruling, he was taken away. And his fate, who will think about it? He was eliminated from the land of the living struck dead because of my people's rebellion. His grave was among the wicked, though he had done no violence and had spoken nothing false. But the Lord wanted to crush him and to make him suffer. If his life is offered as a restitution, he will see his offspring, he will enjoy long life. The Lord's plans will come to fruition through him. After his deep anguish, he will see the light and he will be satisfied. Through his knowledge, the righteous one, my servant, will make many righteous and will bear their guilt. Therefore, I will give him a share with the great, and he will divide the spoil with the strong in return for exposing his life to death and being numbered with rebels, though he carried the sin of many and pleaded on behalf of those who rebelled. Would you join me in a responsive reading from Psalm 22? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but find no rest. Yet you, the praise of Israel, are enthroned in holiness. In you, our forebears trusted. They trusted you and you delivered them. To you they cried and were saved. In you they trusted and were not disappointed. But I am a worm and not human. Scorned by others and despised by the people. All who see me mock at me. They make mouths at me, they wag their heads. He committed his cause to the Lord. Let the Lord deliver him. Let the Lord rescue him, for the Lord delights in him. Yet it was you who took me from the womb, you kept me safe upon my mother's breast. Upon you I was cast from my birth, and since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. 
It is melted within my breast. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, and my tongue cleaves to my jaws. You lay me in the dust of death. Indeed, dogs surround me. A company of evildoers encircles me. They have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divided my garments among them. And for my raiment they cast lots. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who worship the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before the Lord. For dominion belongs to the Lord who rules over the nations. All who sleep in the earth shall bow down to the Lord. All who go down to the dust shall bow before the Lord. And I shall live for God. Posterity shall serve the Lord. Each generation shall tell of the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn. Surely the Lord has done it. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. From the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 16 through 25. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and I will write them on their minds. He also adds, I will remember their sins and their lawless deeds no more. Where there is forgiveness of these, there is no longer any offering for sin. 
Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he had opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful, and let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. John chapter 18, verse 1 through chapter 19, verse 42. After he said these things, Jesus went out with his disciples and crossed over to the other side of the Kidron Valley. He and his disciples entered a garden there. Judas, his betrayer, also knew the place because Jesus often gathered there with his disciples. Judas brought a company of soldiers and some guards from the chief priests and Pharisees. They came there carrying lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus knew everything that was to happen to him 
So he went out and asked, Who are you looking for? Jesus the Nazarene. I am. Judas, his betrayer, was standing with them. When he said, I am, they shrank back and fell to the ground. He asked them again, Jesus the Nazarene. I told you, I am. If you are looking for me, then let these people go. This was so that the word he had spoken might be fulfilled. I didn't lose any one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus told Peter, Put your sword away. Am I not to drink the cup the Father has given me? Then the company of soldiers, the commander, and the guards from the Jewish leaders took Jesus into custody. They bound him and led him first to Annas. He was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jewish leaders that it was better for one person to die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Because this other disciple was known to the high priest, he went in with Jesus to the high priest's courtyard. However, Peter stood outside near the gate. Then the other disciple, the one known to the high priest, came out and spoke to the woman stationed at the gate, and she brought Peter in. The servant woman stationed at the gate asked Peter, Aren't you one of this man's disciples? I am not. The servants and the guards had made a fire because it was cold. They were standing around it, warming themselves. Peter joined them there, standing by the fire and warming himself. Meanwhile, the chief priests questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered, I've spoken openly to the world. I've always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews gather. I've said nothing in private. Why ask me? Ask those who heard what I told them. They know what I said. After Jesus spoke, one of the guards standing there slapped Jesus in the face. Is that how you would answer the high priest? If I speak wrongly, testify about what was wrong. But if I speak correctly, why do you strike me? Then Anna sent him, bound, to Caiaphas, the high priest. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still standing with the guards, warming himself. Aren't you one of his disciples? Peter denied it, saying, I am not. A servant of the high priest, a relative of the one whose ear Peter had cut off, said to him, Didn't I see you in the garden with him? Peter denied it, and immediately a rooster crowed. The Jewish leaders led Jesus from Caiaphas to the Roman governor's palace. It was early in the morning, so that they could eat the Passover. The Jewish leaders wouldn't enter the palace. Entering the palace would have made them ritually impure. So Pilate went out to them and asked, What charge do you bring against this man? If he had done nothing wrong, we wouldn't have handed him over to you. Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The law does not allow us to kill anyone. This was so that Jesus' word might be fulfilled when he indicated how he was going to die. Pilate went back into the palace. He summoned Jesus and asked, Are you the king of the Jews? Do you say this on your own, or have others spoken to you about me? I'm not a Jew, am I? Your nation and its chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom doesn't originate from this world. If it did, my guards would fight so that I wouldn't have been arrested by the Jewish leaders. My kingdom isn't from here. So you are a king. You say that I am a king. I was born and came into the world for this reason, to testify to the truth. Whoever accepts the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? After Pilate said this, he returned to the Jewish leaders and said, I find no grounds for any charge against him. You have a custom that I release one prisoner for you at Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? Not this man. Give us Barabbas. Then Pilate had Jesus taken and whipped. 
The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head and dressed him in a purple robe. Over and over they went up to him and said, Greetings, king of the Jews. And they slapped him in the face. Pilate came out of the palace again and said to the Jewish leaders, Look, I'm bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no grounds for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and their deputies saw him, they shouted, Crucify! 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 You take him and crucify him. I don't find any grounds for a charge against him. We have a law, and according to the law, he ought to die, because he made himself out to be God's son. When Pilate heard this word, he was even more afraid. He went back into the residence and spoke to Jesus. Where are you from? Jesus didn't answer, so Pilate said, You won't speak to me? Don't you know that I have authority to release you and also to crucify you? Crucify! You would have no authority over me if it had not been given to you from above. That's why the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. From that moment on, Pilate wanted to release Jesus. However, the Jewish leaders cried out, saying, If you release this man, you aren't a friend of the emperor. Anyone who makes himself out to be a king opposes the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he led Jesus out and seated him on the judge's bench at the palace called Stone Pavement in Aramaic Gabbatha. It was about noon on the preparation day for the Passover. Pilate said to the Jewish leaders, Here is your king. Take him away. Take him away. Crucify him. Crucify. Crucify. What? Do you want me to crucify your king? We have no king except the emperor. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to be crucified. The soldiers took Jesus prisoner. Carrying his cross by himself, he went out to a place called Skull Place, an Aramaic Golgotha. That's where they crucified him and two others with him, one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a public notice written and posted on the cross. It read, Jesus the Nazareth, King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. Therefore, the Jewish chief priests complained to Pilate, Don't write the King of the Jews. But this man said, I am the King of the Jews. What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and his sandals and divided them into four shares, one for each soldier. His shirt was seamless, woven as one piece from the top to the bottom. They said to each other, Let's not tear it. Let's cast lots to see who gets it. This was to fulfill the scripture. They divided my clothes among themselves, and they cast lots for my clothing. That's what the soldiers did. Jesus' mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene stood near the cross. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that time on, this disciple took her into his home. After this, knowing that everything was already completed in order to fulfill the scripture, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was nearby, so the soldier soaked a sponge in it, placed it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. When he had received the sour wine, Jesus said, It is completed. Bowing his head, he gave up his life. It was preparation day, and the Jewish leaders didn't want the bodies to remain on the cross on the Sabbath, especially since that Sabbath was an important day. So they asked Pilate to have the legs of those crucified broken and the bodies taken down. Therefore, the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men who were crucified with Jesus. When they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. However, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. The one who saw this has testified, and his testimony is true. 
He knows that he speaks the truth, and he has testified so that you also can believe. These things happen to fulfill the scripture. They won't break any of his bones, and another scripture says, They will look at him whom they have pierced. After this, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate if he could take away the body of Jesus. Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but a secret one because he feared the Jewish authorities. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and took the body away. Nicodemus, the one who at first had come to Jesus at night, was there too. He brought a mixture of myrrh and aloe, nearly 75 pounds in all. Following Jewish burial customs, they took Jesus' body and they wrapped it with spices and linen cloths. There was a garden in the place where Jesus was crucified, and in the garden was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish preparation day and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. May Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on a cross, keep you and strengthen you, now and forever. Amen. <laughs> 